what are the ideas you believe you contributed to Pinterest but were never compensated for? Um, sure. So first, thank you so much for having me, Emily. Um, I'd like to start by saying that, uh, yeah, I, uh, I actually helped to create the core concept of Pinterest. Um, I created its utility, uh, which at that period of time was a visual bookmarking tool. Um, most importantly, I found the community um, and introduced them and brought them onto the platform, uh, a community of bloggers, uh, uh, designers, uh, folks that I'd worked with many years prior to this. Um, and last but not least, um, I created the marketing strategy um, that helped Pinterest, um, uh, you know, sort of expand and sort of the viral way, way that it did um, that eventually led to the mass adoption of the website. Now, at the time, you had your own lifestyle blog. You had your own e-commerce startup. As you say, you took them to conferences, introduced them to people. What did they already have by the time you started giving their input? Um, they didn't have anything. Um, the period of time in which uh, I started working with them, Pinterest was really just uh, an idea. It was a drawing on a piece of paper that occurred at my uh, apartment one evening. Uh, and there was no website. Uh, it was really something that needed to be, um, you know, figured out, <laughs> uh, you know, both from its utility um, and beyond that in terms of its community. You're suing for breach of implied contract, idea theft, among other things. And Pinterest says these allegations are completely without merit. How do you respond to that? Um, yeah, well, I respond by saying, uh, you know, I know exactly what I've done and what I did at Pinterest and for Pinterest uh, over the period of time in which I did it. Um, and I know that that Ben, that ben Silberman and Paul Ciara, um, they remember exactly who I am and they know exactly what I contributed. Um, so I'm, I'm calm in my case and looking forward to continuing uh, to work through this with them. You say that they verbally agreed to compensate you many times. Can you tell us about those conversations and what was said? Yeah, so we had countless numbers of conversations um, over the period of four years. Um, you know, this was a 24 seven uh, venture. This was something that um, was being worked on constantly. Um, and those were, you know, those were things that are often come up in conversation. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, no one went into the situation, um, you know, with an understanding that, you know, they were going to tap into my subject matter expertise, uh, leverage um, my myself, uh, my community, and my contacts there, and the years that I had established a relationship within that community. Um, I think the idea that, you know, you would bring someone in and, and not pay them and not, not credit them after, you know, the uh, enormous amount of work uh, that went into that platform is is simply absurd. Now, you were never formally employed by Pinterest, as I understand it, and you didn't ask for a contract. So why are you asking to be compensated and credited now? Why not do this years ago? I mean, the company was founded officially in late 2009. They went public in 2019. Yeah, um, so I'm really coming forth right now to claim what I've earned. Um, that's simply what I'm looking for, um, is just what I've earned for the work uh, and, the, and the years that I spent developing the product. Um, it, was, it was explicit, it was known, um, the expectation has been there. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't think that there should be any surprises from anyone um, about, you know, coming forth at this point. Did you try to reach out to them before filing a formal lawsuit? I mean, did you think about that or were they at all, um, were any conversations about this started before the lawsuit hit? Yeah, that's something I absolutely thought about um, and I've given a lot of thought to. Um, I'll tell you on, a, on IPO day, um, which was a really devastating day for me, um, you know, they sent a very loud and clear message um, you know, when they didn't pay me um, or even acknowledge that I simply existed. Um, and so, you know, I, I, like I said, it just, it shouldn't be a surprise. Um, I certainly contemplated reaching out to Ben on that day. Um, I actually started drafting an email 
Uh, and at the end of the day, I realized on the other side of that email was a whole team of lawyers and, and just a lot of people uh, that I realized, uh, you know, it would be best for me to approach the situation in a much more appropriate manner. Um, and that's why we're here today. I understand you have evidence to back up your claims. What kind of documentation do you have? Do you have a paper trail? Do you have emails or texts from that point in time? Well, like I said, um, we were working very closely together 24-7 uh, for about four years. Um, so I'm very confident in my case. I'm very confident um, in what I have. Um, and I'm very excited to move forward um, and, and, and again, work this out and receive what I've earned. Can you tell us a little bit more about your relationship with Ben in particular? You go back to college, I believe. You were actually close friends. You were a bridesmaid in his wedding. Tell us a little bit more about your relationship with Ben and your relationship with Paul and how that developed. Yes, uh, so Ben and my uh, then boyfriend in college and now husband uh, were best friends in college. Uh, they were in the same residential college at uh, Yale University. Um, I was dating my husband um, at that period of time and spent a tremendous amount of time there. Um, so we spent a lot of time together. Um, you know, beyond that, uh, you know, when Ben moved from, you know, DC to San Francisco, we picked up our friendship right where we left it. Um, and these are people, you know, Ben and Paul Ciara, you know, included. Uh, these are two individuals that, you know, came to my family's my childhood home uh, and opened presents with my family on Christmas morning. Um, you know, so I, I think that probably says a lot about uh, the level of friendship that we had. There are broader questions about how Pinterest treats women and people of color. The former COO, Francoise Brocker, sued the company, settled uh, for gender discrimination. Two black women, Ifeoma Ozoma and Erica Shimizu Banks, have publicly accused the company of pay inequity, say they were victims of, of racist and sexist remarks at the company. Pinterest employees have staged a virtual walkout in response to some of these issues. Shareholders have sued the company and the board over its workplace culture. What do you make of this, especially given that this is a company that serves a majority female customer? Yeah. Um, so look, I'll say I'm not surprised. Um, I wasn't surprised to hear about any of those things that came out. Um, I think at this point, you know, as you stated, um, Pinterest has a long, ugly history of anti-woman bias and behavior. Um, I know how I was treated. I know what my experience was. Uh, so I wasn't surprised to hear about these things in the slightest. And last quick question, what do you want out of this? What are you hoping for? <laughs> Yeah, I I really love what I earned. I worked really hard on this product. I put my heart and my soul in it. Um, and I think any creator uh, that puts their heart and soul in, in, in anything um, expects that at the end of the day, at the very least, they'll get what they earned. Um, so that's really what I'm looking for here. Uh, and I certainly want to send out the message that this is just not some way that you can treat creators. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm here to really stand behind that.